Want to speed up your language learning? Get access to all of our best PDF cheat sheets for free. Just click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Hi guys, welcome to JapanesePod101.com. Um, this is Hiroka. Today, I'm going to explain about Nitsuite. Nitsuite means about. So for example, I talk about this one. About. Okay, so it means about. But um, there are so many uh, the, the phrases uh, like uh, instead of Nitsuite. But uh, today uh, I focus on a little bit about the, like Nitsuite and then I can explain the other phrases. The guys, have you ever uh, heard these phrases like uh, Nitsuite? It's a really official way uh, when you use Nitsuite. Uh, it means like a, a. It sounds like a more regarding. For example, when you uh, send an email, like a business email, uh, to the customers and then you say, I'm contacting you regarding this like that right and then you use a, like a regarding right so it sounds like a more regarding uh, about is more bit casual I think like you can use uh, like a about to uh, when you talk with your friends so it is more a bit like a regarding for my point of view um, I will give you some examples that I need to uh, uh, when we have to use this uh, one and then uh, you can get the point at the last okay so let's go so, for example the first one is So this example like when you when you in the school and it means like teacher said please sit down sit down please guys sit down today you guys learned about or regarding this kanji like the kanji means Japanese character so it means like um, you know the the, the, the teacher is uh, uh, say in a like official way right like in the school is like a more official way it's not the casual way right so the teacher said like my uh, that they often use this phrases yeah it means guys um, this is Hyoka so I'll explain about um, my thesis like the graduation thesis uh, or I will of guys this is Hyoka I um, I will I will um, talk about my thesis from now on so it means nine so um, it's a uh, until this one like you use in the like uh, like a school like in a university or um, middle school uh, it's a school example right uh, but uh, when you say something in the public like in front of the stu other students or uh, in front of the teachers uh, you can uh, often you say Nine third example is Yes, 
こんにちは、えー、本日はですね地球温暖化について、えー、専門家の方をお呼びして、えー、お話をお聞きしたいと思います、えー、こちら専門家の方になりますどうぞよろしくお願いします So it's a, a kind of like a, the TV program example.、Um, so the documentary、uh, started, or news、uh, started, and then the, the announcer said, Okay,、um, good morning, everyone. So today、uh, we're going to talk about the、like、global warming.、Um, we, uh, we gathered uh, uh, professionals about this uh, uh, theme. So,、uh, uh, please welcome、uh, Miss, Mr. Watanabe. It's like that. So,、um, it's a TV documentary or、uh, like a news is more official way, right? So,、uh, they also, like a newscasters,、um, the, the, the professors, or like a professionals, always say, like, a nine nine three day. について、uh, They often use these phrases.、Um, if you have any questions about how to use these phrases, you can ask a Japanese friends.、Uh, yeah. So, and then there are also like so many phrases, like instead of nani nani について for example, nani nani ni kanshite, or nani nani no koto について You can use a nani nani ni kanshite also、uh, instead of. Nanyan、uh, is more、uh, like an official way. So you can、uh, use Nanyan ni kanshite instead of Nanyan ni tsuite. Okay.、Um, I, I already gave you the example.、Uh, you can uh, put the, uh, you can、um, take Nanyan ni tsuite and then and you said、uh, put the Nanyan ni kanshite. It's not.、Uh, It's not strange. Guys, welcome to JapanesePod101.com.、Uh, this is Hiroka. So today I'm going to explain about the yo. Yeah. So, guys,、um, have you ever seen the yo? It's, it's a kind of the、uh, word. Like we put the、uh, yo in the end of the、uh, sentences. So, for example, これがお菓子だよ。Like that. Maybe you guys uh, have, uh, have heard、uh, this kind of、uh, phrases. だよ。But when I searched、uh, in the website or、um, chat board,、um, like Japanese learners always like confuse this, phrase,、uh, this word. So,、um, today,、uh, if you watch this video,、uh, it's become so clear, and then you can understand、uh, the concept of the dial, and then you can use、uh, the next time when you talk with your friends. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so、um, there are two concepts、uh, um, about dial. So, first one is you. Uh, when you、uh, say something and then to, to other person, and then other person、uh, s a y something to you, and you want to mention your opinion to the, the person. And second one is like you point the stuff, something.、Uh, so, this is the concept of a dial. Yeah, so the first concept is like, for example,、um, please watch this、uh, the example. Hi, Donald, omiyage da yo! Arigato, Hiroka! Okay, so I said,、uh, Donald, kore ga omiyage da yo! It means, hey, Donald! This is a souvenir for you, like that. So,、um, so it means I point this. Okay, so you can use uh, this uh, dial to anything, like, これが合いますかだよ 
you you want to when you want to mention uh, this is eye mask to your friends you can say dayo this is glass case so これ眼鏡ケースだよ like that これ眼鏡ケースだよ okay um and then uh also please watch this これどうやって使うのひらがこれはねこうやってこうやってこうやって使うのよ Okay, so maybe you guys think like what is that thing? <laughs> okay, uh, ask me like oh Hiroka, how do you use this one? How do you use this one? And I answer こうやって使うんだよ it means like ah um, don't know uh this is how we use hmm. so i say the yo so it means like i want to mention the the usage of this class to the donald like to my friend uh, also like uh it means like you um bits like it's include a bit something like you uh falsely uh, say to your uh, opinions uh to your friends like uh, this is this is how to use maybe you guys think um you guys have uh the scene uh, in the manga like a japanese comic uh maybe you've seen like nani nani da when you talk with someone and uh, if you use uh er, da it's a bit unnatural um da sounds like uh um the the sentence is uh the cut you cut the sentence like, it's like a bit the bit that sounds a bit um unnatural so i think like a conversation is um like a catch ball between people so like uh for example you uh maybe you put the like oh you know uh at the end of the sentence like like that or like like this or like or well it sounds like uh, uh like a connector uh the between the sentences that is like a more like the end <laughs> and sentence like improve the good like a better conversation like and also um the sentences becomes more softer like it sounds very softer you can put anything i think like almost all sentences uh, to dial but please be careful please use this only to your friends or like younger people please don't use to older people it's a uh, really rude so the dayo is a really like a casual uh, phrase it's like so that's why yeah okay so the last um so thank you for watching this i think you guys uh now you can guys can perfect uh, perfectly use this phrase is dayo so you're becoming a professional if you want to uh learn more japanese Japanese phrases or like a Japanese words and if you want to improve your uh, conversation Japan the Japanese conversation skills um, please uh, watch the, the more video in this channel and then um, also you can download the uh, the lessons uh, in the sub subscription below Okay, so thank you guys. Bye bye. Call the police. 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 Call あなたは熱がありますか Do you have a fever? ちょっとあの寝てきます。パスポートをなくしました。I lost my passport. <笑>パスポートをなくしました。I lost my passport. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! 
。私は何か悪いものを食べたと思います。I think I ate something bad. <笑>私は何か悪いものを食べたと思います。<笑> I think I ate something bad. <笑>気分があまりよくありません。I'm not feeling well. 気分があまりよくありません。気分があまりよくありません。I'm not feeling well. 私は怪我をしました。I hurt myself. 私は怪我をしました。I hurt myself. 痛い。手伝っていただけますか Can you help me? おいしょ。おいしょ。おいしょ。ティンティリンティリン。ティンティリンティティン。よいしょ。あ、ありがとうございます。すいません。手伝っていただけますか ?Can you help me? ティンティリン。いいですよ。はい。あ、ティンティリンティリン。ティンティリン。迷ってしまいました。I am lost. <笑>いや、こっちかな。いや、ちょっと待って、おかしいな。えー、迷ってしまいました。I am lost.119 番に電話してください。Call 119, please. 大丈夫ですか大丈夫ですかすいません。119番に通報してください。大丈夫ですか Call 119, please. 大丈夫ですかしっかり、しっかりして。So, in Japan, when you call emergency, press 119. If you want to call the police, call 110. 助けて !Help! 助けて助けて !Help! Five popular Japanese bands. Let's go! AKB48 AKB48 の誰が好きですか ?Who is your favorite AKB48 band member? Green Green の曲を聞いたことがありますか ?Have you ever heard Green's song? 彼らは顔を出さないグループです。だから私もこのメンバーがどういう顔なのか知りません。ミスター・チルドレン。ミスター・チルドレンは日本で有名です。ミスター・チルドレン is a famous band in Japan. ミスター・チルドレンの歌はファンじゃなくてもよくテレビで流れたりするので聞き慣れてる曲が多いです。ミスター・チルドレンは私の友達が大好きなバンドです。吉田兄弟。吉田ブラザーズ。吉田兄弟は世界的に有名です。吉田 Brothers is internationally famous. Baby when I get famous. 吉田兄弟は三味線を弾きながら歌っているバンドです。嵐、アルシー。嵐はアジアで人気があります。アルシー is popular in Asia. Thank you for watching. ありがとうございます。Do you have any favorite Japanese singer or band? 音楽を楽しみましょう Let's enjoy music! Bye for now! See you next time! Ciao! Let's get started! First, let's look at the basic definition of this verb. The basic definition of the verb, iku, is to go. We use this verb when we are talking about moving from one place to another. For example, 来週アメリカに行きます。I'm going to the USA next week. 一緒に海へ行きませんか ?Do you want to go to the beach with me?Okay, let's look at how to conjugate this verb.Former, non-past formal, 行きます、行きません。Past formal, 行きました。行きませんでした。ポリショナルフォーマル。行きましょう。インフォーマル。ノンパスインフォーマル。行く。行かない。パスインフォーマル。行った
行かなかった。volitional informal 行こう。て form 行って。Now, let's look at some other meanings of this verb. The first one is to come. The verb iku can be used in Japanese much in the same way as come is used in English. In many sentences, when an English speaker would usually use the word come, in Japanese, the word iku is used. Let's look at some examples. In the following situation, yuki o yamashita. And his friend Ben n e e d to rush to a lecture after a late lunch on campus. Yukio calls out to Ben. Ben kun! Ben? Um, ima kara iku yo? Yeah, I'm coming now. English speakers might feel tempted to directly translate their natural response here and use the verb to come, which is kuru. But this would sound unnatural in Japanese. This sentence literally means, from now I go, but it translates as, I'm coming now. In the next situation, Shin is inviting his friend Sasha to the pool. Ashita pool ni ikanai? Do you wanna come to the pool tomorrow? Ii ne, issho ni asobi ni iko? Sounds good, I'll come hang out. In the second example, we see the verb used in two ways. In the question, Puru ni ikanai? The verb is used in the negative form to create an invitation. Using ikanai with a question intonation creates a question. Yes, this is the non past negative form of the verb and it can be used to mean won't go. But here, because it's part of a question, it takes the meaning won't you come? The response is in volitional informal to show agreement. Here, iku combines with the verb asobi, which means to play. But it can be understood as to hang out. This conversation appears as tomorrow, pu won't come? Good, hang out and go. But it translates as do you want to come to the pool tomorrow? Sounds good, I'll come hang out. Okay. Let's look at the next way to use this verb. The next use of iku is to mean to be gone somewhere or to currently be in a place. It's important to note that this isn't actually a separate meaning for the verb. Rather, when we use the verb in the teiru form, it takes this meaning. This is a bit different from how we express state in English, so we want to introduce it here. When we use iku in this way, we typically see it used in the itteiru or itteita forms, in non past and past forms. You may know that teiru is usually used when someone is doing something right now, but with iku, it shows a result. For example, Tokyo ni itteiru appears as I'm going to Tokyo, but it actually means I'm in Tokyo. And it describes the result rather than the action in progress. You can think of it as someone went and now remains. Let's look at some examples. In the following conversation, Ben visits his local coffee shop and asks the barista, an acquaintance, about a mutual friend. Saikin kare to atteru? Have you seen him recently? Kare wa Amerika ni itte iru yo? He's in America. The barista responds with Amerika ni itteiru to express that the person in question has gone to America and is currently there. This sentence may appear as he is going to America, but it translates as he is in America. Let's look at another example. In this conversation, Ben's friend Hana asks him about where he was. 今日はどこに行っていた Where were you today? 病院に行っていたよ I was at the hospital. In this situation, the verb is used in two ways. The young woman asks, どこに行っていた The verb, 行く 
is in the past informal teiru form, which tells us this is a past tense question about the previous location. Like with the first example in this section, this teiru is not translated as continuing action, rather a state. We therefore understand this question not as where were you going today, but as where were you today. The reply uses the same form, itteita. Again, this refers to a state. I was at the hospital. Note that it's possible to answer this question with itta as well. This would mean simply, I went to the hospital. The example response looked like hospital was going to, but it translates as I was at the hospital. All right, let's move on to another way to use this verb. The third way to use iku is to indicate the method of transportation. Note that when iku is used in this way, the particle preceding the verb is de, which marks the method. Because this use of iku is used to describe a method of transportation, we can translate the verb into English as whatever is most appropriate for the situation. For example, drive, cycle, take, etc. Let's take a look at some examples. In the following conversation, Itsuki asks his son, Shin, about how he plans to travel to the beach. How are you going to get to the beach? We are going to take the train. To make the question, Itsuki uses the non past informal, Iku with upward intonation. Literally, it means how beach go. But in natural English, we translate it as how are you going to get to the beach? The son responds with Densha de ikuyo. Again, here in the response, iku is used in the non past informal form. It is preceded by densha de. They can mark a method of doing something. In this case, it follows densha train. We could understand this as meaning by train. When we pair this with iku, the meaning becomes go by train. Yo is added at the end for emphasis. A natural English translation with appropriate verb is we are going to take the train. Let's look at another example. In the following conversation, Sasha expresses surprise in a moment where she believed her classmate Satsuki might have run to school. Did you run to school? No, I rode my bike. Sasha begins by asking her classmate a confirmation question. Did you run to school? The classmate responds by clarifying that no, she did not run. She explains the method of transportation used by marking the mode of transport with de. Here, the method is jitensha, so the phrase becomes jitensha de or by bicycle. The sentence ends with itta in the past form, which tells us that the action is complete. Why the literal translation of iku is go. When we refer to bicycle in English, we use the verb ride. The sentence appears as no, by bicycle I went, but translate as no, I rode my bike. Now, let's look at the variation. Umaku iku, to go well, to turn out okay. Please note that when this expression is used in writing, it may be expressed only in hiragana, or only the first part, umaku, may be expressed with kanji. This is up to the writer. Let's take a look at some examples. In the following sentence, Noriko shares her opinion about an upcoming work project. I don't think this project is going to go well. Here, the speaker uses the non past negative form of the expression. Umaku iku, umaku ikanai. Although this is a work situation, 
where formal language is typically used. This verb ends in the simple non-past form because it precedes the formal. To omoimasu. The subject of this sentence is kono projecto. We know this because it's followed by the topic marking particle wa umaku ikanai. To not go well follows immediately after. This sentence may appear as this project will not go, I think. But it translates as, I don't think this project is going to go well. Let's take a look at another example. In this situation, Ichika waves goodbye to Hassan and his teammates as they leave for a tournament. I hope the competition goes well. Here, the grammar pattern, yoni, is used, which connects to the verb it follows and means in order to, or so that, it's commonly used to express hopes and wishes. The sentence ends with the non-past formal, negatte which can be understood as to hope or to wish. This sentence may appear as competition go well in order to, I wish. But it translates as, I hope the competition goes well. Great! Now you know three different ways to use the verb, iku, the basic conjugated forms of the verb, and an additional expression that uses this verb. All right, that's all for this time. Hi everybody, my name is Alicia. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about Japanese adverbs of frequency. Let's get started. Okay. First, I want to review this grammar point. What is an adverb of frequency? Adverbs of frequency answer the question, how often? So when you ask something like, how often do you do something, some activity, and you respond with a word like always, or sometimes, or never, those words are adverbs of frequency. They tell us how often we do something. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about adverbs of frequency in Japanese. When we use adverbs of frequency in Japanese, we place these adverbs before the verb or before a verb phrase. So you'll notice throughout the example sentences that I prepared here, there are a couple of different places that you might hear the adverb uh, appearing. So I'll cover that in a bit. Also, I want to point out that you can use both polite verb forms and casual verb forms with these. So again, I'll show you uh, both forms in the example sentences, but just keep in mind that depending on the person that you're talking to and depending on your relationship, like for example, if you're close friends or maybe if you're roommates or if it's a working relationship, it will be up to you to choose whether you should use the polite form or whether you should use the casual form. So with that in mind, let's take a look at a few examples of this. First, this one. Uh, the first example here. So I've got everything laid out in this same pattern. We'll see romaji, and then we'll see hiragana, and then we'll see the full sentence using kanji as well. So the first sentence is this one. Watashi wa tokidoki terebi wo mimasu. So here, my adverb of frequency is tokidoki. Tokidoki. So this one means sometimes, sometimes. This sentence means I sometimes watch TV. Here you'll also notice that I have this beginning part, watashi wa, in parentheses. This is because when yourself, when you are the subject of the sentence or when the subject of the sentence is known, it's very common and very natural to just drop it in Japanese. For the purposes of this lesson, I've included it here so that you can see that I'm talking about myself. Um, but the key that I want to focus on throughout this lesson is this part right here, these adverbs of frequency. So, tokidoki, sometimes, terebi, so terebi means TV, television, o, and then mimas. So, here I'm using mimas, I'm using the polite form of the verb miru. But as I talked about earlier, you can use both the casual form and the polite form here. So, again, it's just up to the situation, that's up to you to determine. So that means that miru is also okay. Miru is the non-past casual form of the verb mimas. So this is the non-past polite form, mimas. So mimas or miru. So miru mo okay. You can use both of these uh, to finish the sentence. So for example, tokidoki terebi o miru is also totally correct. It again is just up to your relationship with the speaker. 
Another thing that I wanted to point out here um, is this. Uh, I know that I've written tokidoki in this way maybe a little bit differently than some of you perhaps have practiced before. This ki, uh, where maybe like this, this middle part that goes through uh, the top part of the ki, does not directly connect to the bottom part of this character. Um, so that's one thing that you might see in handwritten Japanese that's a little bit different uh, from what you've seen uh, when typing on your computer or like when using your smartphone too. So please note that this ki uh, is just a handwritten form of ki. So you might see both of those. It kind of depends on the person. But I feel like I see ki uh, written a lot this way. So I've chosen to include it in this way here. So again, this means I sometimes watch TV. I sometimes watch TV. So here, uh, I've got tokidoki before terebi o mimasu. Terebi o mimasu, so TV, and then mimasu. My verb comes here after my object marking particle o. So terebi o mimasu. I want to point out, though, that another thing you might hear sometimes is uh, terebi o tokidoki mimasu. So sometimes you'll hear people using the frequency adverb directly before the verb as well. And that's fine. So watashi wa terebi o tokidoki mimasu. So you might hear that as well. And of course, in very casual speech, like when someone just remembers something, as we do in English, you might just hear it added after the sentence. So for example, if you're having a conversation in English with a friend of yours, you might say something like, yeah, I watch TV, sometimes. You can do exactly the same thing in Japanese. Like, oh yeah, terebi omimasu, doki doki, that kind of thing. You can still do exactly the same thing. So just keep that in mind. Let's take a look at one more example, and then we'll move on to looking at the actual adverbs of frequency in more detail. This one, biru o yoku nomu. Biru o yoku nomu. So this sentence means I often drink beer. I often drink beer. So my frequency adverb here is yoku, yoku, and my verb is nomu. So as I said in the first example sentence, you can move that frequency adverb to another position in the sentence. So here I have biru, beer, biru, and you'll notice I've dropped the i. I haven't written the i, the watashi wa, part of the sentence here. So biru o yoku nomu. So here, yoku, we often translate this as often in textbooks and stuff, but if you really think about how we use an expression like this in English, you could also understand it as like, all the time. So as an American English speaker, it's very natural for me to say like, oh yeah, I drink beer all the time. Something like that sounds a little more casual to me than I often drink beer. So keep that in mind. It doesn't have to be like a direct translation. Like yoku doesn't have to mean exactly often, but you can think of it as meaning all the time, especially in a situation like this, where the sentence ends in nomu. So nomu means to drink. And nomu is the casual non-past form. So nomu is correct. And as I mentioned before, we can use polite verb forms. The same is true with this example sentence. So nomu could also be nomimasu. So nomimasu mo ok. So keep this in mind. Either is fine. Again, if I'm talking about beer with someone, it's probably in a casual situation. And maybe, I don't know, I've just met this person in like a pub or a bar or something, and we're just chatting about drinking. And I might say something like, mm, yeah, biru o yoku nomu yo. So something like that sounds a little bit more casual than biru o yoku nomimasu. So it's up to you. Again, depends on how polite you want to sound. Okay, so I often drink beer, or you could understand this as like, I drink beer all the time as well. I think I just added a yo at the end of this sentence too. So you can add those kinds of things to give a little bit more emphasis as well. But again, this yoku comes before nomu in this case. You could also say yoku biru o nomu. That's also fine as well. So it just needs to come before the verb or kind of this verb phrase. So you can kind of think of the uh, object and the verb as connected in one like unit in that way. So it just needs to come before that. Okay, so with this in mind, I want to take a look at a bunch of example sentences that use these adverbs of frequency. I've made a very, very rough scale from 0 to 100. And the scale, it's, it's not perfect, like 50 is not here because there's a lot to talk about. But I want to show some example sentences and talk a little bit about um, some things for you to consider when you're practicing uh, your speaking in particular. So I want to start down here at the bottom of the scale at zero. So the zero mark, uh, the zero point is in English where we would say never, never. So in Japanese we say zenzen, zenzen. So zenzen, this is the kanji for zenzen. 
you can look it up as well. Uh, so zenzen is used to mean never, like 0% of the time, something that you never do. And uh, we can also use zenzen for emphasis. We use it to mean like at all in English. So when we say like, I can't do that thing at all, or I don't do that thing at all, that's kind of the feeling we can communicate with zenzen. So let's take a look at a couple of example sentences that use this so that you can get an idea of it. First one is, 最近彼と全然会わない. So, 最近, recently or these days, 最近彼と, so him, so some guy, person, some male person, to, so we use to when we're talking about meeting someone, doing something with someone, 彼と全然会わない, 全然会わない. So, this zenzen, my never point, my never adverb of frequency, comes before my verb here. So my verb here is ao. However, when we're using zenzen, and we'll also see the same rule with amari and metani, we cannot use a positive. We need to use the negative form of the verb here. Zenzen awanai. So literally, this sentence would mean, or this part of the sentence would mean, never don't meet which if we directly translate it into English sounds like a double negative, but this is just the way it is in Japanese. So again, kare, or sorry, 最近彼と全然会わない. 最近彼と全然会わないよね. So we kind of put this part, um, it, it's like a marker before the negative thing comes. So this is kind of telling us that there's something negative coming. So um, this is one pretty good example, pretty common example. Uh, so this sentence then means, uh, recently, I haven't seen him. Literally, uh, it means I haven't met him, or maybe recently uh, I never see him is perhaps a little bit more accurate here. It depends, again, a little bit on the context. Uh, but this is how we would use zenzen in a situation like this with uh, meeting someone. So let's take a look at one more example sentence that uses zenzen in this way. So this one is, osake wa zenzen nomanai. Osake wa zenzen nomanai. So this means I can't drink alcohol at all, or maybe I don't drink alcohol at all. So actually, <clears throat> uh, I should say, uh, I don't drink alcohol at all. I've used nomanai here. If I'd made the example sentence zenzen nomenai, so I meaning I can't drink alcohol, that would mean I can't drink alcohol at all. However, here I've made it nomanai. So nomanai is the casual non-past form of the verb to drink. So that means I'm not expressing possibility there. If I said nomenai, which means not able to drink, it would be I can't drink alcohol at all. Here, uh, I don't drink alcohol at all. So these are like important little distinctions to make. So for a translation of this sentence, uh, I don't drink alcohol at all, or I never drink alcohol. So again, let's break this down a bit. I have osake. So here I've attached uh, o to sake. So as maybe many of you know, sake means alcohol. It's not like a specific type of alcohol. It's alcohol. The word for alcohol in Japanese is sake. And we attach an honorific to sake. Uh, we use o in front of it. O sake, o sake. And then we mark it as our topic with wa. We follow this with zenzen. So again, zenzen is coming before the verb. In this case, nomanai, nomanai. Zenzen nomanai. I totally don't drink it at all. That's what this is saying. I never drink it. Osake wa zenzen nomanai. So please use zenzen before the negative form of your verb. I wanted to include a couple more examples then that use zenzen more as like an emphasis for at all. Uh, so let's take a look at these um, just to see, just to give you a couple more examples of the ways in which we use zenzen. So the first one here is chugoku go, Chinese. Chugoku go wa zenzen hanasemasen. Chugoku go, Chinese. Chugoku go wa zenzen hanasemasen. Hanasemasen. So hanasemasen, one, I'm using the polite form of the verb. So hanasemasen is showing me masen, the negative form as well. So polite negative form. I'm also using hanase. This is my potential form. So this is showing me potential and negative. So I'm expressing something that I cannot do. So, chugoku go wa zenzen hanasemasen. So this sentence means, I can't speak Chinese at all. I can't speak Chinese at all. So chugoku go means Chinese. 
And then that's my topic marking particle, wa. Zen zen, so not at all, or it's coming before my negative verb. And then hanasemasen, so not able to speak. So put it all together, I can't speak Chinese at all. So I could remove zen zen from this sentence, but it would lose that emphasis of at all. Like I could say, chugokugo wa hanasemasen. That's fine too. I can't speak Chinese. But if you say zen zen hanasemasen, it's an emphasis thing. It's like, I can't speak Chinese at all. That's the difference here by adding zen zen to this sentence. Let's look at one more example and then we'll move on to the next adverb of frequency. This one is, piano wa muzukashikatta. Zen zen dekinakatta. So again, piano wa muzukashikatta. Zen zen dekinakatta. So here I've kind of got two parts. Uh, this is maybe similar to something you might hear in everyday speech. So not a perfect full sentence, but a couple of short ideas put together. So first is, piano wa muzukashikatta. Muzukashikatta. So muzukashikatta is the past form of the word difficult. So muzukashi, maybe you know, means difficult or hard. So muzukashikatta means it was difficult. So piano was really difficult. Piano was difficult, maybe for me or something like that. Then, the following sentence is, zenzen dekinakatta. Zenzen dekinakatta. So again, we have the zenzen, meaning at all, our emphasis word, before dekinakatta. Dekinakatta. So again, we have this negative verb. In this case, I'm using the past form that is in casual. So dekiru means be able to do something, the verb dekiru. But here, I'm using dekinakatta, which means was not able to. So past casual, not able to do something, with this emphasis word zenzen. Zenzen dekinakatta. I couldn't play it at all, or I couldn't do it at all. So again, literally, like a literal translation of zenzen dekinakatta is like at all, not able to do it. But if we think about it in context a little bit, here we're talking about playing an instrument, the piano. So you could think of this translation as something like, I totally couldn't play, or I couldn't play it at all. So think a little bit outside like the literal, like the direct translation of your verb, uh, and then it's going to sound a bit more natural when you think about the expression in English too. So this is how we use zen zen. Again, a key point with zen zen is that you're using it before the negative form of a verb. It can be the casual form or the polite form. Both are correct. So with that in mind, let's continue to the next one. The next one that I have here is a pair. So maybe uh, if you've studied Japanese in textbooks and online, you're probably familiar with this one, amari, amari. If you have, again, I suppose, studied a bit online, or maybe if you've been to Japan, or if you have some Japanese-speaking friends, uh, you might also know this one, amari, amari. They mean the same thing, but in speech, in everyday speech, amari tends to sound like amari, amari. So what's the difference? It might be hard to hear that, but amari, that's three syllables, that's three beats, amari. But amari, there's like this extra n sound there, so that's what it sounds like often in everyday speech. So we can think of these two, and actually the next one as well, mittani. We can think of these as meaning like hardly ever or rarely or seldom. So they're not zero, but they're expressing like a very low frequency of something. As we did with zen zen, we also need to use a verb in the negative form with these. So that means we're going to use nai or we're going to use masen. So this is for the casual form, nai. Uh, this would be the non-past form. And masen. This is the polite form, again, non-past form. So let's look at some example sentences and talk a little bit about how we might translate those into English. First one, let's take a look here. Uh, this one uses amari, amari. So eiga wa Ammari minai. Eiga wa ammari minai. So what does this sentence mean? First we have eiga. Eiga means movie. Eiga wa. So wa is my topic marking particle. Ammari. Ammari. So again, that's that feeling of like hardly ever or rarely or seldom. And then minai. Minai. So again, miru, which we saw earlier, miru or mimas means to see, to see or to watch. So here, we usually watch uh, movies. We usually say watch for movies. So I suppose you could say see a movie if you're talking about going to a movie theater. So we use the negative form here. 
英語はあんまり見ない。You could use, again, if you want to, this long form as well, the polite form. 英語はあんまり見ません。見ません。So again,、uh, for, well, for space reasons on the board, but also just in general, if you're speaking just with a friend, you're probably going to use this more casual form, but you can use 見ません as well too. 英語はあんまり見ない。So, Please note, あんまり again comes directly before the verb. あんまり見ない。あんまり見ない。映画はあんまり見ない。Hmm. Let's look at one more example. This one uses めったに、めったに。So you might not have seen めったに before.、Uh, I don't feel that I see it so much or hear it so much compared to like あんまり or あんまり。Uh, めったに also means hardly ever. I think in the JLPT it's about level N3 perhaps for grammar. So, m e t t a n i is used to mean the same thing. We use it in the same way as we've just talked about with a m m a r i So, let's practice. This one. Hom wa m e t t a n i yomanai. Hom wa m e t t a n i yomanai. So, here again, m e t t a n i m e t t a n i comes before. Yomanai. So, this is the negative form of the verb yomu. Yomu means to read. Yeah? So, yomanai, negative. So, metani, hardly ever don't read, is what this means. It sounds again like a double negative, but this is just the way it is. So, hon wa metani yomanai. I hardly ever read books. I hardly ever read books. Also, a pronunciation point. One pronunciation point that I sometimes hear、uh, learners. Uh, maybe have challenges with is with a word like this, home. Home. So this is spelled in Roman letters H O N. It looks like hon, hon.、Uh, but we do not say it like that. Home. So the, the n sound, the n at the end of this word is very soft. It's not like a hard English hon, hon. So try to make those n, those ending n sounds really, really soft. And then you'll be able to transition into that next wa much more smoothly. So, like, not hon wa metani yomanai, but hon wa. So, you can kind of hear how I do that. Hon wa. So, the, it becomes like a nwa together. I'm putting those two sounds together, linking them. Hon wa metani yomanai. Also, another point here is this stop. So, maybe it's a little bit difficult to see here because it's small. But in metani, there's this small tsu. So, we know that when we see a small tsu in our Japanese writing, it's showing us where we need to put those stops in words. When we look at the word in nomaji, though, it looks like metani, metani, but we cannot pronounce it this way. It's totally incorrect. Metani, metani. So, hon wa metani yomanai, yomanai. So, make sure that this stop is also clearly pronounced. Metani, metani yomanai. Okay, so the big takeaway from this point here is to please make sure that you use the negative form with these adverbs of frequency. Okay, with that, let's continue on to the other side of the scale. The next one is tamani, tamani. So maybe you can see tamani also ends with this ni. So we saw it with metani, and now we're going to see it with tamani, tamani. Um, you'll hear in everyday speech that people like to kind of extend sounds in this word. They'll say, tamani. This is something that I do. This adverb of frequency means like every once in a while or from time to time. So, depending on how long you make that tama, that part, the ma sound, tamani, depending on how long that sound is, you can kind of emphasize、uh, the frequency with which you do an action. So, tamani means like every once in a while. That's why I have it at maybe like the 40 or so mark on my scale here. So, different from the other ones that I've talked about in this lesson so far,、uh, we do not need to use the negative form here. Here we use the positive form of a verb. We can use, again,、uh, the casual form or the polite form. Both are fine. So, let's take a look at some example sentences. <clears throat> First one. Kare to tamani ao. Kare to tamani ao. So, this sentence means, so him again, and I have to, to, so again, I'm marking、uh, the person with whom I do something with to. Tamani, every once in a while, ao, meet, meet. So, this means I see him every once in a while. I see him every once in a while. Kare to tamani ao. If you want to emphasize it, like I was talking about earlier, you can make this ma sound a bit longer. 
彼とたまにや。So that'll make it sound like it's very, very infrequent. That's kind of the vibe that you're giving off if you make that ma sound a bit longer. Kare to tama ni a. Again, you could use the、uh, polite form here. Aimas. Kare to tama ni aimas. So I see him every once in a while. It's just going to increase the level of politeness of your statement. One more example. <clears throat> Kohi o tama ni nomu. Kohi o tama ni nomu. So, we're seeing our friend Nomu again here, drink, to drink. And in this case, I have kohi, coffee, coffee. So, coffee, I have my object marking particle, wo, here, wo.、Uh, and then I have tamani right before my verb. So, we can use it、uh, in exactly the same way as we talked about before here, just to make sure that your verb is positive. You should not be using the negative form of your verb. Also, one point I want to make this wo. I have it here, and I think lots of textbooks、uh, use o, or maybe they use w o.、Uh, the sound that sh you should be making is kind of, it's not like the, the strong English w sound. It's a much softer w sound. So, ko hi o, it's kind of like you're sliding into it a little bit. Wo, ko hi o, tama ni nomu. So, that was a little bit exaggerated.、Uh, but try to think about this o sound. Wo. So, it's a very, very slight W sound at the beginning there, but、uh, working on that will help you to sound a little more natural. Kohi o tama ni nomu. Tama ni nomu. And you'll hear too, like this ni kind of connects a little bit to the verb. So, not kohi o tama ni nomu, but kohi o tama ni nomu. So, they kind of connect. It's, it's kind of like everything flows nicely together there. So, it's not so much.、Um, Of, like, this up and down that we have、uh, in American English speech. Okay, so with that, let's carry on then to tokidoki. Tokidoki. So, tokidoki was in my example sentence in the beginning of the lesson. Tokidoki means sometimes, sometimes, or I guess you could also say, like, occasionally as well. So, tokidoki, tokidoki, tokidoki gohan o tsukuru. Tokidoki gohan o tsukuru. So, sometimes, gohan, food. So, gohan, gohan o tsukuru. Tsukuru means to make. Tokidoki gohan o tsukuru. So I sometimes make food, or I sometimes cook food. That's what this sentence means. Tokidoki gohan. Gohan. So gohan, again, I have an honorific here. Han is used before, like, just meals in general. So we don't have to be specific, like breakfast or lunch or dinner. We just want to talk about, like, the act of cooking. We could use an expression like gohan o tsukuru, like to make food or to cook food. Tokidoki gohan o tsukuru. So again, I'm connecting this gohan to my、uh, object marking particle here. Gohan o tsukuru, tsukuru. And make sure that that、uh, tsu sound at the beginning of tsukuru is really clear too. So not tsuru、uh, and not tsukuru either. So another like, kind of pronunciation challenge point that I hear from some people is they kind of make that tsu really, really strong. So it's not tsukuru. We don't have that really heavy, like, tsukuru sound when we、uh, say this verb. We say tsukuru, tsukuru. So that u sound, that first u sound, or maybe the first u in tsu that we see on paper, this u, is really, really small. Tsu, tsu. So tsukuru, tsukuru. That's how it should sound. So, tokidoki gohan o tsukuru. Tokidoki gohan o tsukuru. I sometimes make food, I sometimes cook food. Okay, one more example. Tokidoki jogging o suru. Tokidoki jogging o suru. So here I'm using a loan word, jogging, jogging, jogging. So jogging.、Uh, I've written it here in both hiragana and katakana. Tokidoki jogging o suru. So again,、uh, I'm using tokidoki before this phrase, before this verb phrase. Jogging o suru. Jogging o suru means to go jogging or like to jog. So, jogging o suru. So, in this case, again, I'm using jogging before o. So, that's my、uh, activity. That's the thing that I'm marking as the object of my verb, which is suru here. So, please be careful as well. Suru and tsukuru may sound a little bit similar when you're first getting started, but they're very different. So, suru means like to do something generally, tsukuru means to make. To make. Tsukuru, suru. Tsukuru, suru. So, a good listening point. Okay, so this is sometimes, sometimes. So I sometimes go jogging, or I sometimes jog. We could understand those、uh, as the translations for this example sentence. 
Okay, carrying on, two more to go. The next one is yoku, yoku. So I used yoku in this example sentence up here. Biru o yoku nomu. So yoku means like often, as we talked about earlier. Often or all the time, frequently, something that we do regularly. Yoku. So let's look at some more examples that use yoku. Also,、uh, a pronunciation point when you say yoku, it shouldn't be yoku or like yoku, something like that. Yoku, yoku. So let's take a look at how we put this word in sentences then. Uh, down here, because I was running out of space. First one, smaho yoku tsukao yo. Smaho yoku tsukao yo. So this is maybe a little bit confusing at first. Smaho, what is a smaho? Smaho o. So I know that this is maybe like a noun. I can probably guess it's a noun because it comes before this direct object marker, yeah. And then I have yoku, my adverb of frequency, plus my verb, and then an emphasis marker, yo. So Sumaho is the shortened word, or like the way that、uh, we say smartphone in Japanese. So sumatohon, I guess, is how you would say it、uh, as a long word. But that's quite a long word, sumatohon, and we say it a lot. So this gets abbreviated. This becomes shortened to sumaho, sumaho, sumaho. Yoku tsukao yo, yoku tsukao yo. So yoku often tsukao. Tsukao. So again, we have that tsukao, tsukao. So it starts with that tsu sound, just like we talked about with tsukuru. So again, this tsu sound, the u sound in that tsu, should be really, really short. So not tsukao. I hear lots of learners say that when they're beginning. Not tsukao, but like tsukao, tsukao. So every syllable is there. Yoku tsukao yo, yoku tsukao yo, and I'm adding this emphasis yo. Yo, so it's like a spoken exclamation point.、Mm. So, smaho yoku tsukao yo. Another example, kanojo wa yoku undo suru. Kanojo wa yoku undo suru. So here, kanojo. So her, she. Wa. So she's my topic. Yoku, adverb of frequency, meaning often, regularly, all the time. Undo. Undo means exercise. Undo o suru. So undo o suru is like we can think of as another kind of unit, a verb unit, meaning to exercise, to do exercise. So this sentence we could understand as meaning she often exercises, or she exercises all the time. Kanojo wa yoku undo suru yo. I could add maybe like emphasis there if I want to、uh, like emphasize that someone is an athlete. So. Again, it's up to you if you want to add like those little yos or nes or whatever at the end of your sentence. Kanojo wa yoku undo suru. So here too, you'll notice that before my、uh, before my particle here, o, I have this o sound undo, and that undo has that long o sound that's really tough. So to pronounce that, and then it just connects to the wo, like the direct object marking particle there. Undo suru. So you don't need to say undo o suru. You can connect everything the same way that we would connect similar sounds, kind of in English too. So undo suru.、Um, so that's another point that maybe you can practice. It doesn't. It shouldn't all be like a long undo suru. <laughs> you need to be able to kind of mark with your voice where that particle is. So undo suru. It kind of goes up. Undo suru. So anyone who's listening can figure out like where that word ends, undo, and where the marker comes in,、uh, the direct object marker comes in, and then we kind of go back down to that suru, undo suru. So this means、uh, she often exercises. So she exercises all the time. All right, let's go on to our very last one for this lesson. The last one is at the 100 mark of the scale, itsumo. Itsumo. Itsumo means always, always. So we talk about the things that we always do. So things that are part of our everyday schedule that we do every day or every hour, every week, whatever. We use itsumo to describe that. Itsumo. So let's look at some examples. First one. Neru mae ni itsumo kao o arao. Neru mae ni itsumo kao o arao. So neru mae ni. Neru mae ni. Let's break this down. Neru mae ni. So neru means to sleep. Mae ni means before. So sleep before 
it doesn't sound like so natural when I translate directly into English, but this means before sleeping or before I go to sleep. Neru mae ni itsu mo kao o arao. Kao means face. Arao means wash. So I have itsu mo before this action. Kao o arao. Itsu mo kao o arao. So itsu mo means always. I always wash my face before I go to sleep. I always wash my face before I go to sleep. Always face marked here by my o, my direct object particle, verb arao. So before I go to sleep, I always wash my face. Is what this means. One more example. Asa itsu mo hao migaku. Asa itsu mo hao migaku. Asa means morning. Itsu mo always ha teeth o migaku. So literally polish, but here brush. So asa itsu mo hao migaku. So I always brush my teeth in the morning. So asa morning itsu mo hao migaku. So again, itsumo is coming before this kind of like verb phrase, this verb unit. Mm. So, itsumo hao migaku. So, this is how we use itsumo. Again, we use itsumo, yoku, tokidoki, and tamani with the positive forms of verbs. We use these, zenzen, amari, amari, and metani with the negative forms. Mm. So please keep this in mind as you're practicing、uh, your speaking and your writing with these adverbs of frequency. So、uh, this is a really good one, I think,、uh, for you to practice. You can practice this with your writing、uh, a lot to talk about、uh, how often you do certain activities. So this is a really, really great one、uh, that you can use、uh, for just some quick writing practice at home. So I hope that this lesson was helpful for you. Of course, if you have any questions or comments, or if you want to practice making some example sentences, please feel free to do so in the comment section of this video. If you like this lesson, please, please, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you have not already, and check us out at JapanesePod101.com for some other things that can help you with your Japanese studies. Thanks very much for watching this lesson, and I will see you again soon. Bye bye. Tokidoki Terebi o mimas. Tokidoki Terebi o mimas. Tokidoki Terebi o mimas. Beeru o yoku no mu. Beeru o yoku no mu. Beeru o yoku no mu. Saikin kare to zenzen a wanai. Saikin kare to zenzen a wanai. 最近彼と全然合わない。お酒は全然飲まない。お酒は全然飲まない。お酒は全然飲まない。映画はあんまり見ない。映画はあんまり見ない。映画はあんまり見ない。本はめったに読まない。本はめったに読まない。本はめったに読まない。彼とたまに会う。彼とたまに会う。彼とたまに会う。コーヒーをたまに飲む。コーヒーをたまに飲む。コーヒーをたまに飲む。時々ご飯を作る。時々ご飯を作る。時々ご飯を作る。時々ジョギングをする。時々ジョギングをする。時々ジョギングをする。スマホをよく使うよ。スマホをよく使うよ。スマホをよく使うよ。彼女はよく運動をする。彼女はよく運動をする。彼女はよく運動をする。寝る前にいつも顔を洗う。寝る前にいつも顔を洗う。寝る前にいつも顔を洗う。朝いつも歯を磨く。朝。いつも歯を磨く
朝いつも歯を磨く明日のテストに受かりますようにそしておいしい食べ物が食べれますようにそしてえー、っと私の未来が明るくなりますように仕事が成功します。Hi guys! Welcome to Japanese for the one on one.com. Today's phrase is like the phrase for like when you wish something, like I wish you say I wish or like I hope, like that. But do you know how to say in this in Japanese? There are three phrases there. First one is Nani Nani Dato i na. Second is Nani Nani Masuyo ni. Third is Nani Nani to inote i mas. There are three phrases in Japanese. There are other phrases also, but the, these three is the basic one. I will give you some examples and then、um, and then at the last you get the point and then you definitely can、uh, completely use these phrases、uh, when you wish something. So in Japan,、uh, July 7th,、uh, we celebrate the event called Tanabata.、Uh, so July 7th,、uh, we prepare the,、um, like、the bamboo trees and then we write down your wish. To the、uh, paper, we hope like it will become untrue, like that. And then, and then when you write down the paper,、um, we always use like, nani nani masu yo ni. It's like,、uh, so, can go de irare masu yo ni, or sekai ga hewa de ari masu yo ni. We always、uh, use this kind of phrases. And when you check the paper,、uh, like all people write down these kind of、uh, your phrases. So, how about the, you, a friend, getting、uh, cold in,、uh, when you sent a message to them? When you write down a message, like the, for example, your friend getting cold, and then,、uh, like, sorry, I can't go to today's event, and sorry, like that. And then you say, oh, that's so sad, and sorry, you of you wish will be better soon, like that. And then we always say, nai nai da to i ne, or nai nai da to i na, also. So, And then the last things is like, nai nai to inote imas. When you write down the,、uh, like any like,、uh, letter to the friends、uh, far, from you, uh, far from you, or like, we always use these phrases when you、uh, write down the letter to the older person, like,、uh, and then we say, nai nai da to inote imas. So at the, the, at the par last part of the letter, we Always write down like, can go de sugo se rukoto i no te imas, like that. So,、um, I hope you will、uh, lead a life healthy,、uh, you will lead a healthy life, like that. When we do use these phrases,、uh, especially in the letter, But you will hear,、uh, maybe you will hear、uh, some other、uh, places in these phrases. So, but the, it's a kind of the one of the example. Okay. Thank you for watching this video. I think you will get、uh, know like、uh, the phrases. Nani nani da to i na, nani nani masu yo ni, nani nani to i no te imas. It's a little bit long、uh, phrase, but uh, uh, after you get used to it,、um, You will、uh, definitely can use this. Mina san, konnichiwa! Welcome to kanji time! Today, let's do entry kanji! If you want to do the quiz first, please go to these times! Koko desu! This kanji means equip, provision, preparation. The own reading for this kanji is bi, as in sebisuru, meaning to maintain, facilitate. And the kun reading for this kanji is sona, as in sonairu, 
meaning to prepare, equip. This kanji means excel, surpass, superiority, gentleness. The own reading for this kanji is you, as in you should, meaning excellent, excellent. And the cool reading for this kanji is yasa, sugu, as in yasashi, meaning kind, thoughtful. This kanji means whole, entire, all, fulfill. The own reading for this kanji is zen, as in zenin, meaning all people. The kun reading for this kanji is matta, sube, like in subete, meaning full, all. This kanji means together, both, and with. The own reading for this kanji is kyo, like in kyotsu, meaning common, mutual. And the kun reading for this kanji is tomo, as in tomo ni, meaning together. Tomo ni odorimashou. This kanji means tool, utensil, ingredients, counter for armor. The own reading for this kanji is gu, like in dogu, meaning tool, instrument, and also gutaiteki, specific, concrete. Quiz time! Say the reading for the following kanji. Kyotsu. Sonaeru Yasashi Gutaiteki Zenin Now say the meaning of the following words Dogu Tu Instrument Sebisuru To maintain, facilitate, yushu, excellent, tomoni, together, subete, whole, all. Today, let's review any three kanji. Let's go! Oh, if you want to do the quiz first, please go to these times. Then, this kanji means inside, within, between, among, house. The own reading for this kanji is nai, as in inai, meaning less than or within. And the kun reading for this kanji is uchi, as in uchigawa, meaning inside. Uchigawa, sotogawa, uchigawa, sotogawa. Inside, outside, inside, outside. Bing. This kanji means cool, cold, chill. The only reading for this kanji is lei, as in leizouko, meaning refrigerator. The cool reading for this kanji is tsume, hi, sa, as in hiyasu, meaning to chill, cool down. Hiyasu, atameru, hiyasu, atameru. Cool down, warm up. Then, this kanji means light, ray, flash, gloss, be luminous, sparkle. The own reading is ko, as in ko sen, meaning a ray or a beam. <laughs> and the cool reading is hika, hikari, as in hikari fiber, meaning optical fiber. Hikari to yami. Then, this kanji means file, row, rank, column, line. The only reading for this kanji is letsu, as in gyoretsu, meaning Q. Best ramen shop in Tokyo. Always people gyoretsu shiteru. Always people gyoretsu shiteru. Mada ka na? Gyoretsu ga nagai na? And letto, meaning archipelago. Then, this kanji means first, beginning. The own reading for this kanji is sho, as in shoshinsha, meaning beginner. And kun reading for this kanji, hatsu, ui, haji, so, as in hajimete, meaning for the first time. 
quiz time! Say the reading of the following kanji. Let's go! Kousen Shoshinsha Gyoretsu Uchigawa Hiyasu now, say the meaning of the following words. Reizouko Refrigerator Hikari fiber Optical fiber Hajimete For the first time Inai Less than within Betto Archipelago. Hi everyone! Welcome to Kanji Time! Today, let's review N3. Kanji, let's go! Oh, if you want to do the quiz first, please go to these times. Then, this kanji means judgment, signature, stamp, seal. The own reading for this kanji is Ham, bam, like in hanko, meaning stamp, seal. Hanko and hanketsu, meaning judgment, ruling. Then, this kanji means sharp, profit, useful, advantage. The own reading for this kanji is ri, as in ryousha, meaning user. Hi! Japanese Port 101 Riyosha no minasama. And the kun reading for this kanji is ki. Like in migi kiki. Meaning right hander. Migi. Migi kiki, hidari kiki, migi kiki, hidari kiki, migi kiki, hidari kiki, migi mimi, hidari mimi, migi me, hidari me, migi mayu, hidari mayu, kuchi. Only one. Then, this kanji means arrival, reach, attain. The own reading is to, like in torai, meaning arrival, or advent, and tochaku, arrival. Yabai! Isoge! Tochak! Arrival! Then, this kanji means system, law, rule, control. The own reading is Say, as in seisaku, meaning production, and seifuku, uniform. Boom. This kanji means engrave, chop, mince, curb. The own reading for this kanji is koku, as in chokoku. Chokoku means sculpture. And the current reading for this kanji is kiza, like in kyabetsu wo kizamu. Meaning, to chop cabbage. <sighs> Whew, quiz time! Say the reading of the following kanji. Migi kiki Hanketsu キャベツを刻む。制作。到来 Now say the meaning of the following words. 彫刻。スカルプチャー。利用者。ユーザー。制服。Uniform, hanko, seal, stamp, tochaku, arrival. If you want to do the quiz first, please go to these times. This kanji means month, moon. The own reading is getsu, gatsu, 
as in 3月 meaning March. March. And the kun reading is 月 as in 月 meaning moon or month. This kanji means to see, to be visible, to show. The o reading is ken as in kengaku meaning looking around. And the kun reading is mi as in miru meaning to see. Miru, minai, miru, minai, miru, minai. Dochiya. This kanji means word, to talk, to tell, to say. The o reading is gen, gon, as in gengo, meaning language. And the kun reading is i, as in iu, meaning to tell, to say. Iu, iwanai, iu, iwanai, iu. This kanji means old, used. The o reading is ko, as in koshi, meaning used paper. And the kun reading is furu, as in furui, meaning old. This kanji means five. The o reading is go, as in go nen, meaning five years. Ichi nen, ni nen, san nen, yo nen, go nen. And the kun reading is itsu, as in itsutsu, meaning five items. Ima nan sai? Itsutsu! Quiz time! Say the reading of the following kanji. Kengaku Gonen Sangatsu Iu Furui Now say the meaning of the following words. Tsuki Month, moon, gengo, language, miru, to see, itsutsu, five items, koshi, used paper. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and ebooks for free. Just click the link in the description.